Gentlemen, I want to take you through what I've been doing in the past and what I'm doing now to ensure that financially I'll be able to live an extremely good lifestyle when the time comes for me to make the big move and expat to Thailand. I'm making this video for those of you who, like myself, are very concerned about ensuring that you maintain your freedom and independence, have financial security on your terms in the land of smiles, and avoid the plight of so many Westerners who have lost their own freedom and security by giving it up at their very own expense to their younger, poorer, but beautiful Thai woman or ladyboy. Let's start with a few terms. I'm what's known as a fundamental investor. That means I analyse stocks, real estate and other investments in an attempt to measure their intrinsic value. What they're worth in terms of their real value in comparison to what they're selling for in the marketplace. I also consider myself a value investor. This means I attempt to invest my money in investments which are trading for less than their intrinsic value. I also engage in growth investing, which is a strategy focused on capital appreciation by investing in companies that exhibit signs of above average growth. And I try to invest in high growth companies even if the price of the shares is a little, but not excessively high. I believe to a large degree in what is known as the efficient market hypothesis. This is an investment theory that states it's impossible to beat the market because stock market efficiency causes existing share prices to always incorporate and reflect all relevant information. The existence, however, of investors like Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, who have consistently and over a very long period of time managed to beat the market, indicates to me that the efficient market hypothesis is not entirely accurate, but I consider it accurate enough to know that the chances of me or anyone else, including investment professionals, managing to beat the market over a long period of time are very slim indeed. Slim enough to make individual stock picking for the vast majority of people not to be the right strategy to focus on. I have the majority of my money invested in an index fund with Vanguard, which has extremely low fees. A defined benefit retirement fund with my employer and the rest of my money I manage myself by investing in individual companies via the stock market. I have an account with Comsec via which I invest in the Australian stock market as well as international stock markets like the New York Stock Exchange, the Nasdaq, the Japanese stock market and yes even the Thai stock market. I also engage in startup investing but I limit this to starting technology companies myself where I have the technical expertise to add a lot of value both at the executive level or at the hands-on programming level. I can't mention the name of the company that I've started as it's been featured in the media, is known in the Australian startup scene and it would reveal my identity. But suffice to say that it's a very promising company which is worth quite a bit of money on paper but has been a huge amount of time, effort and stress getting it to where it is. And it's probably something I won't ever do again, at least not on that scale, given the technological complexity of the software I had to lead the development of and get into the marketplace. I lost my peace of mind in the process of building my startup, and that to me is too high a price to pay. Peace of mind is worth more than money to me. That was a lesson I certainly learned the hard way. Right now, I'm currently 37 years old. My goal over the last 16 years has been to pump as much money as I could into my defined benefit pension plan, to pay off my student debt, to put money into my index fund account, and to learn as much as I could about investing so that I could also buy businesses via the stock market that I'd be willing to hold literally forever to the day I die. The types of investors I've studied over the years include Warren Buffett, Charlie Munger, Peter Lynch, Philip Fisher, and Benjamin Graham. I've read a lot of books either about or by these people, 
Now, I studied closely the annual reports of Warren Buffett's company, Berkshire Hathaway. There is so much knowledge I've gleaned from these people that has made me a better investor. I have both an intellectual understanding of the topic of investing and the intuition to know what to buy and what to pass on. I've avoided any kind of property investment in Australia over the past 16 years due to the ridiculously high prices, the extreme level of debt I would have had to have taken on, and the lack of adequate diversification that goes with owning one house in one location, dependent upon the vagaries of one suburb, and the very high maintenance costs, time and effort that is needed to own property directly. I'm not interested in limiting my freedom either. I've moved seven times in 16 years. If I had owned any of those properties, I would have lost money each time. I would have lost two houses by now, at least to the two women that I was in long-term relationships with. Anyway, the real road to wealth is not found investing in residential property. For after all, if you could make more money in property than in business, why would anyone bother going into business? So let's talk about business and stock investing, the main game. Essentially, what I'm looking for when I invest in individual companies via the stock market are great businesses with strong management who are honest, able and have integrity. I'm interested in companies with an established track record with rising earnings, low debt levels, high returns on equity and high profit margins. I look for companies that are simple to understand, have consistency, favourable long-term prospects and strong brands. I look for predictability. I look for markets that are not changing very much. I like to focus my attention on concentrating my funds in outstanding companies. I invest in them with the thought that if the stock market closes tomorrow, I wouldn't care one iota because I own an outstanding business and I want to keep owning that outstanding business forever. I reflect on each and every business I invest in with thoughts like, will this business be around in 30 years' time and pay me dividends in my retirement? I'm not at all interested in the noise or the ridiculous stuff that the brokers or traders on Wall Street or Collins Street say or do. I'm not worried about the economy or predicting stock prices at all. I spend my time studying the annual reports of companies I'm considering investing in and looking closely at the financials of those companies, the management running the show, and the all-important business economics. Like Warren Buffett, my philosophy is very clear. By owning stocks, I own businesses, not pieces of paper. I think and I act like a business owner. As a business owner, I'm interested in the fundamentals of the companies I buy. Investing is most intelligent when it's most business-like. Never forget those words, gentlemen. I will say them again. Investing is most intelligent when it's most business-like. I'm not interested in technical analysis or in stock trading. The greatest fortunes have not been made in these areas of activity, nor will they ever be. There's a lot more that I could go into in this area, but I think it's important for me to say again that the cornerstone of my investing is my retirement and index funds. This is because the vast majority of money managers, professional and individuals alike, and this includes myself, will not beat the index. Even so, I still like to invest in individual companies that are within my sphere of competence and understanding, as I believe that I have the understanding and the emotional fortitude to be able to do this intelligently and for the long term. I'm a better investor because I'm a businessman and a better businessman because I'm an investor. In reality, the index fund investor will, over time, find himself in the top 20% of investors worldwide. The other 80% of investors will achieve worse results. Being in the top 20 percent of investors is a fantastic achievement gentlemen and it's amazing that all you really have to do is own an index fund to achieve this. Do check out John Bogle, the good guy of Wall Street's book, The Little Book of Common Sense Investing, for more information 
an index funds. But outside of my index fund, what are some of the companies that I personally like and that I'm interested in investing in? Each of the companies I'm about to mention have most or all of the things I'm very interested in when I invest my money. As soon as you hear the names of these companies, if you too have studied investing, you will know intuitively that most of these brands are outstanding businesses and represent the types of businesses you really want to own for the long run. Some of these companies I already have investments in and others I'm seriously contemplating investing in. Disney, Coca-Cola, IBM, American Express, Kraft Heinz, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, MasterCard, Microsoft, Johnson & Johnson, Colgate-Palmolive, Shell, BP, Ansys, National Australia Bank, Commonwealth Bank, ExxonMobil, Philip Morris, British American Tobacco, Bellamy's Australia. In all my investments, I reinvest the dividends, and I highly recommend that you do the same. Much of the return you will get from your investing will be from your re reinvestment activities. Reinvested dividends are the return accelerator that allow you to own more shares of your businesses over time, which means more dividends. On and on the cycle goes as the company's compound earnings and dividends at high rates of return, a virtuous and ever-increasing stream of income for you. I want you to think now about the overall goal of my investing activities here in relation to Thailand, a place where us foreigners have no security, as we cannot own land in our own names, and any business we own have to be 51% owned and controlled by a Thai. My calculations indicate that I'll have at least 20 times my annual wage built up following my investment strategy by the time I'm 60. My net position now is I'm about 25% of the way there in terms of my investments with about five times my annual wage under investment. That excludes the large speculative value placed on my startup. If that investment pays off, it will short track everything and get me to my goal much sooner, but the odds are dead against me on that. If my startup pays off, we're talking tens of millions of dollars, but as I say, the odds are stacked well and firmly against me, despite the fact that I've been actively working with the big players, the financial intermediaries, the money men, the investment managers and investment bankers on Collins Street for some years now. The bottom line is the overall goal for us foreigners who want to retire in Thailand is we want to be able to live comfortably off of passive income, retirement, index and stock investments that pay us. Even better if we're able to hold on to stock market capital by living solely off the dividends that our businesses produce for us. That way we'll have a large and growing dividend income in our retirement and we'll get richer as the years progress instead of poorer like many foreigners do. Our goal is to live independently and with security whilst not being under the control of anyone else like a boss or worse at the whim of an emotional, bitchy, moody, ageing and entitled Western woman. I want to add here a little bit about the risks of retirement in places like Patea. Warren Buffett has a quote, I've seen more people fail because of liquor and leverage, leverage being borrowed money. You really don't need leverage in this world much. If you're smart, you're going to make a lot of money without borrowing. Allow me to add a new quote of my own here. I've seen more foreigners fail because of liquor and prostitutes. Reflect on that quote. Consider it carefully, because in places like Bataya, liquor and prostitutes are everywhere. They're a source of great pleasure, but quite extreme risks as well. If you're able to keep control of your investments and maintain discipline in yourself, you'll be able to avoid becoming the newest member of the Bataya Flying Club. Just keep thinking with your big head and do as my smart, retired Australian friend, Mike, in Pateo advised me to do. Keep your investments a secret from the street-level ties and from your tie partner or wife. Spend some of your dividends and your income on having a good time, of course. If you want to fall in love and shake up with the tie, 
do that as well. But go into that situation with your eyes wide open and maintain awareness that your role in Thailand is resource provider. Bar girls from Pattaya and their families are in many cases, sadly, out to milk you dry financially. If you're an investor like myself, with a defined benefit pension plan, i.e. a never ending bucket of money that will pay you a growing amount of income until the day you die, together with stock market investments linked to corporate profitability, then you're akin to the guy in the Ferrari turning up outside the restaurant in the Western world. You're a cash cow that could pull the entire family out of poverty and buy many a water buffalo to replace the sick ones, of course. Remember that your investments will go on forever, while your tired wife or lady boy's looks will fade with time, whereas the money you're paying her and her family is very real, and they will almost certainly spend it on permanent assets like land in Isan. So be mindful of this. This is land that you can't own, remember. Personally, I wouldn't make long-term decisions based on short-term illusions like youth and beauty, but that's me. Maybe I've seen and experienced too much. Maybe I've become too cynical, or maybe I just see things too clearly. Now, I want you to think about what you really want to own, gentlemen. Reflect on this and consider it carefully. Let your common sense and your intuition guide you. Would you rather put your money to sleep and have it tied up in Thailand in, say, a condo, or worse, land in Isan in your T-Rex name? Or would you rather own shares of world-beating, outstanding companies like Coca-Cola, Apple, Mastercard, Mobile, and so on? My view is it's much better to avoid building the opulent palace in Isan, rent a condo in Thailand, and keep your assets in outstanding businesses that will pay you ever-increasing dividend income in your retirement. Why bother buying a condo which has such a limited resale market? Your very real security is coming from the outstanding businesses you own via the stock market, from your retirement fund, and from your index fund. Thailand is a casino for us Western men, remember. If you're going to enter or live in the casino, you'd better have the financial wherewithal to be able to do this. The last place you want to end up broke and on the streets is in Thailand. Remember our homeless brothers on the streets of Thailand. Avoid the fate of Kotto, gentlemen. Now let's expand these thoughts to a local business on the ground in Pattaya. Let's say a bar or maybe a guest house. Let this be your play money and your play investments. Certainly not something you absolutely need to depend on for your income. Personally, I get bored quite easily and I would need something to do in my retirement. So I would seriously consider a local business. But hey, who knows what I'll be thinking in 23 years time when I retire at 60. Maybe I'll be content to just live off my dividends and continue to manage my portfolio of stock market investments. I want to leave you all with a few thoughts about thinking long term. I started my whole Thailand adventures at the age of 33. I'm now 37 and I've been making these short trips for four years now. Over that time, my mindset has shifted from initially wanting to pack up everything immediately and head to Thailand permanently to firmly staying here in the Western world in order to earn higher wages, invest more money and to build my knowledge, skills and experiences here. I've come across other Westerners slightly younger than me in my travels who, like myself, I can see are grappling with the strong urge to stay in Disneyland or to return to the boring Western world. To those of you in this situation, I give you this advice. You're living the dream already. You're a white-skinned Westerner. You earn good money in the Western world. You live a great life here in so many ways. The one thing you're missing is the heart connection you get in Thailand. That's why you're there after all. It's not just the sex. Connection and sex is available to you on, a, on your regular trips. Look forward to your trips to paradise. Plan for them. Dream about them. But keep them firmly in perspective. You have the opportunity to build a much greater asset base in the Western world. Grasp this opportunity with both hands and don't let it go. 
Your Western world passport is your key to living the real dream. Staying single in the West and making these trips, you're having more sex with younger, beautiful, hotter people than your married counterparts could ever dream of engaging in. We're the ones living the true Thailand dream, gentlemen. We get to experience the best of the place with the financial security and with money in our pockets. Keep it all in perspective. Look at the bigger picture. Know that if you cut your professional career short in the West, you're giving up a lot of future assets and therefore lots of future income. All of us are playing a high risk game in Thailand, to be sure. Just remember Rudyard Kipling's poem, If. You could lose everything, come on. Homer, I think Rudyard Kipling said it best. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. Yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And, which is more, you'll be a man, my son. You'll be a bonehead.